Welcome back to the Green Swindle. Now, President Obama's answer to the so-called problem of global warming is one of the most controversial solutions being shopped today. Every little bit of pollution that is sent up into the atmosphere, uh, that polluter is getting charged for it. It is the system known as cap and trade, but what does it actually mean? The government caps how much CO2 companies and industries can produce and then allows them to trade credits in CO2. So if one firm faces very high cost to reduce pollution and another firm has low cost to reduce pollution, the idea is the low cost firm can create credits and sell them to the other company. The idea of cap and trade is that you leave it to the marketplace to determine what measures should be used to reduce pollution. It's really a misnomer to say that cap and trade is a market-based system. At best, you might call it market socialism, because essentially you are rationing energy use. Where did this idea of carbon trading come from? Like many things related to the current administration, it can be traced back to Obama's hometown and a company called the Chicago Climate Exchange, or the CCX. The company declined an interview request, but in an email to Fox News, a spokesperson explains that CCX's purpose is to, quote, help prepare businesses and markets for potential regulations at the international or federal level while reducing greenhouse gas emissions through a rules-based exchange platform. The founder of CCX is Richard Sandor, named by Time Magazine as the father of carbon trading. He was one of the leaders in saying, why don't we get out early and start a climate exchange for greenhouse gases? So he went and got foundation grants from some liberal foundations like the Joyce Foundation. At the time, one of whose board members was a guy named Barack Obama. The company originated with two grants from the Chicago-based Joyce Foundation, whose president, Paula DiPerna, soon left to become the executive vice president of CCX. Senior White House advisor Valerie Jarrett was the foundation's former director. Usually you don't need foundation funding to set up a, um, a commodities exchange. There's usually plenty of private money because uh, there's usually lots of profit in uh, trading commodities. Well, carbon is different uh, because we're going to make that market uh, artificially. In 2006, CCX was acquired by Climate Exchange PLC, which was then acquired in July of this year by Intercontinental Exchange for approximately $600 million. Among those who may have benefited financially, Sandor himself, who owned nearly 17% of shares, Al Gore's company, Generation Investment Management, and Goldman Sachs, which at one point owned as much as 10%. There's a lot of green to be made in being green. Now, despite CCX's arguments in favor of a cap-and-trade system, many scientists and economists maintain not only is it a bad idea, it is also nearly impossible to implement. Climatologist and former NASA scientist Dr. Roy Spencer says that the energy technology necessary to make a large-scale switch from fossil fuels does not yet exist. You cannot legislate new forms of energy into existence. Dr. Spencer also argues that the climate system is much less sensitive to CO2 than most experts claim, and that CO2 in the atmosphere might not even be a bad thing. Cap and trade might make people feel good about themselves, that we're actually doing something to help the environment. But it's not going to have any measurable impact on future global temperatures. Others argue against cap and trade's practicality. If President Obama wants us to reduce emissions to their 1990 levels by 2020 and reduce them an additional 80% by 2050. What does that actually mean in practical terms? It means reducing our fossil fuel energy use to a level the United States last experienced 100 years ago. Most of all, critics argue what the system would mean for an already struggling economy. Cap and trade is a mechanism for punishing the use of fossil fuels so that other sources of energy, which are inherently more expensive, will become more attractive. The Washington Times stated in 2009 that Obama's climate plan could cost industry close to two trillion dollars. That's nearly three times the White House's initial estimate. Where do the energy companies get their money? They get it from ratepayers. They get it from people who buy gasoline and natural gas and electricity. So eventually the consumer pays a hundred percent of the tab. Under my plan, uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Once people saw that it was a huge tax increase folded into their energy bills, uh, then people saw the economic impact not only on their pocketbook but also on American jobs and American competitiveness around the world. 
The greatest amount of experience that anyone has with cap and trade is in the European uh, trading scheme, and they've been dabbling in this uh, for a couple of years now. You've had a number of companies in Europe that have shut down factories or move out of Europe completely into developing nations that aren't suppressing their carbon dioxide emissions. Yet somehow cap and trade keeps inching closer to becoming reality. The Waxman-Markey bill, which would establish a cap and trade system here in the U.S., similar to the EU's emission trading system, narrowly passed the House last year by a vote of 219 to 212. What do you say to the 212 that voted against it? The Waxman-Markey bill was this thousand-page monstrosity of all sorts of deals and special, uh, special arrangements for all kinds of interest groups. That'll create a lot of regulation, create a lot of work for lawyers, create a lot of work for lobbyists. It won't do much uh, to make us a wealthier or greener society. The bill is currently sitting in the Senate. I look forward to continuing this work with the Senate so that Congress can send me a bill that I can sign into law. Politicians are more interested in gaining power than they are in improving our economy. Either that or they're just plain stupid. They really don't care whether the science is right or wrong. All they care about is that this is an opportunity to expand government. And since all of humanity requires energy, uh, this kind of legislation is a bureaucrat's dream because whoever controls energy controls the world.